Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can transfer your lighting from iClone to NVIDIA's Omniverse in order to get consistent results in your project when porting it over from one environment to the other. Thanks to RTX technology, the new iClone connector introduced in version 7.93 allows us to harness the power of ray tracing in Omniverse in order to produce photorealistic renderings of your iClone projects. We'll be going over a few of the key differences between the two rendering modes and how iClone lighting parameters transfer over to the ray tracing environment in Omniverse. There are a number of learning resources available for NVIDIA Omniverse, including the official documentation, which contains detailed descriptions of all the lighting types in Omniverse, as well as their properties. There won't be too much technical detail in this tutorial, but if you want to learn more about the specifics, NVIDIA also has a ray tracing essentials tutorial series available on YouTube. Let's take a quick look at this diagram to get an overview of how real-time rasterization rendering and path tracing work. The Rasterization Plus VXGI system in iClone and Character Creator essentially collect light strength and details on the polygons in the scene and simply render the result by casting it back. With ray tracing, however, rays will be sent out to find light sources in the scene and reconstruct the image by simulating the path of light rays and how they are absorbed and bounce off various objects in the scene. To do this takes a lot more resources, but the end result is a much more realistic render. Path traced reflections are also physically accurate since light rays are simulated. This also means that it's impossible to simulate a truly accurate reflection using the rasterization method. Omniverse also allows for more accurate shadow casting and light occlusion as a result. Light sources are able to cast shadows and will also be blocked by objects. Finally, soft shadows in Omniverse also allow for more realistic shadow results that can change depending on the size of the light source. There are several types of light sources in iClone. Let's take a look at each one and examine how they differ from their counterparts in Omniverse. The first one we'll look at is image-based lighting or IBL. With IBL, images are applied to a light map surrounding the scene, and the light emitted will not be blocked by any objects in that scene. You can see the reflection of the IBL on our object here, and the light is evenly emitted from it despite being inside a large cube. There are also no shadows cast on our object from the surrounding cube, as IBL does not cast shadows in iClone. In Omniverse, IBL light sources are cast in the shape of domes, and if they are in an enclosed box like you see here, they will be completely pitch black. If we zoom out and hide the box, then you can see that the IBL itself in Omniverse will cast shadow, unlike in iClone. You can swap out the IBL from the Omniverse Skies library like you see here for various different environmental lighting results. As a result, IBL is a very important lighting parameter to consider in Omniverse, as it is more detailed and can influence the environment more than it can in iClone. Next, let's take a look at directional lights. The scene you see here in iClone is lit by IBL and one directional light. In iClone, the typical way to adjust lighting in this scene is to adjust the transform rotation of the direct light until you get the desired shadow results in your scene. You can also do things like adjust the intensity of the light with the multiplier value, as well as the shadow darkness to get higher contrast shadows. If you transfer that same project over to Omniverse, the first thing you'll notice is that it's a lot darker in path tracing mode. Most of this is due to the fact that the IBL is being blocked from entering by the walls of the room. So in order to compensate for that, you need to increase the intensity of the direct light. A higher intensity will also create more ambient light due to the bouncing of light off of the various surfaces. There are also settings further down that determine how the materials in your scene react to the lighting. In this case, if the reflection on the table is too bright, you can adjust things like the specular multiplier value in order to tone it down, while at the same time maintaining the overall brightness of the room. The diffuse multiplier allows you to increase or decrease the overall brightness of the room without getting extreme with the light intensity. Next up, let's look at a point light. As you can see, a point light in iClone doesn't cast shadow either. It's mainly used to add ambient color or lighting to a scene without drawing too much attention. In Omniverse, the point light not only casts realistic shadows, but it also stops affecting the scene after getting pushed into the wall like you see here. With this in mind, be aware that using too many point lights in your iClone scene can cause the shadow casting to be too unpredictable and complicated when imported into Omniverse. In terms of spotlights, there's actually not a whole lot of difference between the two systems when it comes to mapped, adjustable settings. However, there are still a few things worth mentioning. In iClone, you can adjust the spotlight by adjusting the three main values of angle, falloff, and attenuation. These work together to create a sharp or faded border for where the light is cast. Range can also be used for effective distance as well. 
In Omniverse, there really isn't a dedicated spotlight, but you will instead find a shape setting for each mesh light that allows it to have specific controls. For this reason, the default spotlight in iClone will be converted to a sphere light when transferred into Omniverse. The spotlight settings in iClone also have a number of shapes you can select from the drop down menu in the attributes. Each shape has a subtly different emissive result and notably different reflective result, which you can experiment with along with their respective parameters in order to see how each affects your lighting result. Essentially what you want to do is map the shape in iClone with the area light counterpart in Omniverse. For example, a rectangular light shape in iClone will be converted to a rectangular light with the same dimensions in Omniverse. The exception here is that a tube light will be converted to a sphere light shape due to an issue with the cone angle in real-time render mode. You can see the erroneous result when it's transferred over to Omniverse here. This will be fixed in future versions. As a follow-up to this, please be aware that the shape and volume of the light source in Omniverse does affect the shadow softness and light strength behavior, whereas in iClone it does not. Let's take a look at ambient lighting parameters now. In iClone, we can adjust the ambient lighting in the visual panel to add a slight tint to the overall color theme of a scene. However, in Omniverse, these settings are only present in real-time mode, as real-time renders often utilize ambient occlusion and lighting in order to improve the image quality, while path tracing stays closer to reality without simulating those values. Therefore, AO and ambient lighting are replaced with light bouncing and indirect lighting in Omniverse. Finally, let's take a look at emissive lighting, which is one of the most important. Unlike in iClone, emissive lights in Omniverse also cast shadows. Here you can see me adjusting the emissive lights along the floor of this spaceship hangar, but you can also notice that it's casting light on the machine in the middle. Emissive lighting also pairs well with the bloom parameter, which can be found in post-processing in Omniverse. Once you select it, you'll get a nice glow emitting from the light source. In this scene, we also have an image of Earth in the background. By adjusting the emissive values here, you can give an image plane like this a completely different visual appeal and set the mood. Now that we've looked at lighting, let's talk a little bit about animation. Lighting animation is currently done mainly in iClone. Most of the settings will be preserved when transferring the data to USD format. However, there are some limitations. Here you'll see a simulation of a couple in a car going through traffic with a point light zooming by them. Pretty standard stuff for iClone, so let's head over to Omniverse and see how it translates. The lighting results here look a lot more moody and interesting, mostly due to the more accurate path tracing. Once in Omniverse, you'll notice that the translation values for the lights have a time sampled value icon beside them, which essentially indicates that these values are baked and cannot be adjusted further. To do so, you would need to go back into iClone and adjust them, and then re-import. In this scenario, we have blinking lights, indicating animated intensity changes. Since the intensity changes will also be baked when importing into Omniverse, you won't be able to change those. However, you can still adjust the exposure in this case for a similar result. Currently, this is the only way to work with animated lights. However, when Live Sync is introduced in the near future, things will become much simpler. So stay tuned for that. That's about it for this introduction to lighting conversion between iClone and Omniverse. Be sure to check out our other Omniverse tutorials on our YouTube channel and learning center and our forums at forum.reillusion.com for the latest updates. I'll see you in the next video.